Hey guys, welcome back. Today is September favourites and I'm just gonna get started with everything that I've been loving this month. So the first thing is that I have placed about four orders from the body shop this month. Like I have been loving them. They've been on fire recently anyway with the colour crushes and the um Hoodie Mania range which is obviously getting massively hyped up and everyone's got to try it so although I have bought a couple of things from the Honey Mania range I didn't actually um, go crazy with it I bought a lot of other things I've been wanting to try for a while instead also um, I did a body shop haul a couple of videos back and I've bought more since then from the body shop so if you want to see another body shop haul then you know give me a thumbs up and tell me in the comments so I can film that as well but the first thing that I've been loving this month from all the new products that I've tried from the body shop has got to be this and this is the body shop spa wisdom africa shea butter and sesame oil body balm now what surprised me about this was obviously it's a little bit more posh than the usual body butters from the body shop but it's exactly the same quantity and exactly the same price for a better product in my opinion um this is basically not as light as a lotion but not as thick as a butter and it's very 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 could i get enough berries in that sentence hydrating i've never come across anything as hydrating as this in my entire beauty life. I get really really dry irritable skin during this time of year because obviously you go from the cold into the dry heat that is central heating a lot of the time in out in out and it really does affect my skin it gets really dry sore irritable and sensitive and this has been working its magic. I've used quite a lot of it it comes in this really nice jam jar style um, pot and you know I have used quite a lot of it I don't know if you can see it. I'm about halfway down you don't need to use a lot of it because it does go quite far just a little bit and it's non-offensive with the scent it's very much um you can layer it with other scents and you can't tell that it's shea underneath there's no like overall nuttiness or anything I just I just love it I can't I can't recommend it highly enough it was 13 pounds and it will definitely be a repurchase like I say it's the most hydrating thing I've ever come across I can apply it and then 24 hours later it still feels like I've just applied it to my skin like it's crazy but it's beautiful and it's like probably the number one favorite this month for me I adore this stuff next from the body shop that I've been loving is the absinthe purifying hand cream now I am a bit of a hand cream hoe I, I have loads of them but I spread myself about them quite a lot if that makes any sense basically um, I'll use one and then I'll leave it to languish in a handbag or I'll leave it lying around the house and then I'll pick it up when I'm in that room put some on and go away again and forget about it but this stuff has never left my side I do a lot of typing on the laptop and I do a lot of shuffling about with paper and moving boxes about and things and this is just brilliant it's not really heavy and it's only lightweight so if you want something really moisturizing then um, definitely go for the almond or the hemp hand cream from the body shop but this is fabulous for just a little lightweight hit of moisture when you need it, it like I say it's non greasy it's not heavy so it sinks in really really quickly and it doesn't make your hands so soft that you can't do anything with them after straight after using it the scent is really fresh refreshing it absorbs horrible smells so for example I was chopping onions the other day to put into my dinner and um, sometimes when you wash your hands after chopping onions the scent doesn't go away straight away so you're left with that horrible onion hand sort of thing and I applied this and it absorbed all the onions straight away it was just really really good I love this stuff and I've actually repurchased another one as a backup because I can't I can't imagine not having this next to me now I really really like this this was about five pounds as well which is I think is a pretty decent price for a hand cream especially one from the body shop so if you're looking for a decent lightweight hand cream something that you can use during the day then I definitely recommend this and the last thing from the body shop is actually this and it is the I, I hold it in my body shop haul it is the honey bronzing powder and this is in the shade fair matte they do do one lighter than this um but basically i've been using vichy derma blend as my everyday foundation recently and the helen e cosmetics foundation stage foundation and they're both very heavy coverage and sometimes um 
it can just look like a mask so to add some warmth back into my skin I've been using this and it's so finely milled I've been using it every single day it really does add a little bit of warmth back into the skin without looking too muddy or too orange and I can't get enough of it this was £13 and it was possibly the best £13 I have spent in a long long time with the exception of obviously this body butter um, body balm even oh I'm getting confused but yeah I genuinely love this stuff and if you're very pale or very fair and you've been looking for a bronzer that won't make you look like you've just stepped out of the cast of Towie then I highly highly recommend these because there is a shit I think there's four or five shades in the range but they are very very light and they don't look like I say they don't look like bronzers they just look like you've added some warmth back into the skin so yeah I definitely love this the next thing that I've been loving is a skincare item and it is the N-Spa Illuminating Beauty Serum and it's an instant natural glow for luminous skin or whatever it says on here. Um, I haven't had it that long, it was £7 from Asda and they are sold exclusively through Asda so if you haven't heard of N-Spa before then get yourself down to an Asda like I did because my nearest Asda is half an hour away and I convinced Dave that I just wanted a change of scenery but actually no it was to hunt N-Spa out because I'm that sad. Um, so yeah, basically this is just a very lightweight serum. It contains the minutest gold flecks in the world. There are no massive glitter particles or anything. I mean, you have to look really, really hard to see the gold flecks. Um, but I apply this on a natural makeup day um, underneath my foundation, just to give a little bit of a, a glow from within, if there is such a thing, like that, that kind of cliche, you know what I mean? Um, but sometimes I do actually mix it with my foundation um, just to give more of a dewy finish that's what I did today and I quite like the effect so I think it's really really good for just adding a little bit more glow and luminosity to the skin whilst you're trying to find it naturally from skin other skincare items if that makes any sense I'm probably not making any sense at all am I also it's really good for applying over makeup as a bit of a highlight so you can use it on your cheekbones just for a little bit of a shimmer or in the corner of your eye so um, it can brighten up the eye area and you really don't need a lot of it it really is good and like I said it's really cheap it's like seven pounds so I really really like Enspar at the moment and I'm gonna hunt out some other stuff to try as well so keep your eye out for that or at least a review on the blog the next thing I've been loving is an old thing. I had this bought for me, Dave bought this for me um, Christmas, last Christmas, and I haven't really been showing it the love it's deserved. So I've started doing um, Makeup Mix Up, which is going to be a series of posts on the blog where I select a few things from my stash every month to sort of concentrate on using. And it is the Urban Decay Naked Basics palette. It just contains six. Uh, sorry, five matte shades and one shimmer highlight, pearlescent shimmer, pearlescent highlight shade. And I've been really seriously loving Walk of Shame and Naked 2. Walk of Shame all over the lid and Naked 2 in the crease and out of V, just for something natural, light during the day. And then obviously if I wanted to darken it up, I could use Faint or I could use Crave. I haven't been using Foxy that much, to be honest, because I just find it to be a little bit yellow toned for me personally. Um, but yeah, definitely, I've been absolutely adoring this. It's been like my most reachable product this month out of my makeup which is why it's made it into here I definitely recommend getting this if you want to try Urban Decay, uh, Urban Decay eyeshadows because it's only £20 I think which is brilliant money for Urban Decay and then the last thing to talk to you about is going to be a hair care product and I couldn't do this video without mentioning this because I am in love with it. It's the Charles Worthington Moisture Seal Hair Healer Leave-In Conditioner. Now I'm probably a little bit biased but this is brilliant. I just, <laughs> I love Charles Worthington anyway. I think they're a much underrated brand. You know, people harp on about John Frieda and Tony and Guy but you don't really see that many reviews on Charles Worthington products and I love 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 Charles Worthington products they've never let me down and this is certainly one of those products I will be repurchasing in the future for starters it's massive so it's going to take me forever to get through it anyway because I only ever use a pea-sized amount I rub it between my hands and then I put it through the ends of my hair because um 
like I mentioned in my previous video, I've been doing a no heat hair challenge and I'm going without hair dryer straighteners, all that kind of thing, all that jazz for a month. So um, I've been really focusing on trying to make the ends of my hair look less fried and this is just phenomenal at doing that. It just looks healthy, shiny, glossy, it smells really nice, it's really easy to apply, it doesn't look greasy unless you put it right directly on the roots, which I do tend to avoid. But yeah, it's just phenomenal. I've done a, a blog post, an ode to this product, so I'll link that below if you want to investigate further. But yeah, I can't recommend this highly enough, genuinely, just one of the best products of 2013, possibly, for me, anyway. So yeah, that was all of the beauty products. Quickly spun through those, so I'm just gonna throw in some random ones. Favourite YouTuber has to be Gabs from Velvet Ghost. I have only discovered her this month, but I love everything she does. Basically, her tutorials are really easy to follow. You know, she doesn't use inaccessible products. When I say inaccessible products, I'm talking about like, Giorgio Armani foundation which is going to cost a normal person an arm and a leg most of the time or she doesn't use something random from a really obscure brand she'll use MAC, she'll use Bourgeois, she'll use Drugstore you know all the things that people are able to buy for themselves or treat themselves to and I really like how they're really wearable as well she doesn't go off on one with all the like fanciness she just does makeup which is fantastic and I do really really like Gabs a lot for that I, I think she's great um, and my favourite book has been Untold Stories by Alan Bennett if you don't know who Alan Bennett is then you might possibly know of some of his work he wrote The History Boys which is a play and that's since been turned into a film which was on BBC not so long ago I actually went to see The History Boys um, before the film was made and I did that in 2006, I think. I went to Lowry in Manchester to see it with my college. And I, I adored it from the moment I saw it, I adored it. Um, and that was when James Corden and Dominic Cooper weren't famous. So that's my claim to fame. I've seen them on stage in the History Boys. But yeah, basically Alan Bennett is a fantastic writer. Untold Stories is a bit of a memoir. Um, it's about his family and his feelings towards his friends and different things that went on in his life and some of it made me bawl my eyes out and some of it has made me laugh out loud. Some of it's made me scratch my head because he is a very intelligent man and I haven't got a clue what he's going on about. But um, yeah, if you like the kind of history boys feel and the um, musings and mumblings of someone who has inspired a generation then I do believe you should read it because it is very fascinating, very well written and incredibly good to read. And then the last thing is my favourite film and I did a review of that film on my blog so I'll link that below and it is Rush. Rush is about F1. Now it's one of those films where you don't actually have to know about the subject to be able to understand what's going on and to appreciate what's happening to the characters. It is based on a true story, it's based on the competitive competitiveness, shall I say, of um, two drivers that were in the 1976 Grand Prix, Nicky Lauda and James Hunt. Nicky Lauda is Austrian, James Hunt is British and um, they basically, it's the kind of relationship the men have and the kind of racing that they do and the things that happen to them that lead them down separate paths but ultimately to respect each other and I think it is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant film. Genuinely, I, you know, if you're not even into that kind of film, I, film, 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 then I think you could still appreciate it for what it is, which is fast paced, interesting, it sets the scene for the era perfectly, that type of thing. So yeah, definitely check Rush out if you're looking for something to watch at the cinema. Also, um, I said it was going to be my last favourite, but also I'm just going to crack on in there and say, um, I just want to ask you about something. I'm looking for plummy toned blushes because I'm wearing a lot of berries at the moment and a lot of purple, um, like lipsticks and things. So I want some plummy toned blush recommendations because a lot of my blushes are either pink or red or coral. I don't actually have any plum toned ones. So if you know of any, then please leave a um, comment, tell me which ones I should be looking at and I shall definitely check them out. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed yourself as much as you can do watching YouTube and I will see you all in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye!